Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be having a chat about the latest the Gisa update from AMD and how that's going to make quite a positive impact on the performance of your system and why you might want to be updating your BIOS. <laughs> So yes, it's a free performance video, but it's also kind of explaining the performance that you should have been getting before, but you weren't, but you will be now if you update your BIOS. So yeah, it's complicated, but in reality it's not. Now a GISA is a set of code that AMD creates itself and sends to the motherboard vendors to implement in their BIOS. And the GISA code Boiling it all down in reality controls memory compatibility, memory performance, but also critically CPU performance as well. So things to do with like uh, boost, all core boost, single core boost, that sort of thing. So it's essentially how the CPU um, and will boost and react if it's left on auto. And that's the critical point that I want to make here and you'll see why in a little moment. Recently, Roman, aka DeBauer, picked up that a lot of the CPUs, or rather all of the CPUs, weren't giving their rated uh, single core boosts, which meant that things like the 3900X, for example, were struggling sometimes to hit kind of like 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz when they were being sold as being single core boost into 4.6. Did a big video about it and thankfully as a lot of the, these videos should be taken AMD took it on the chin and then rolled out this Agisa update and it's the 1003 and then it's got ABBA but I always think of Dancing Queen at that point but anyway and uh, I'll flag this little graph up for you because essentially all of these motherboards in the graph I had already tested on the original BIOS the first BIOS in the graph and then, because of this Agisa update, and it was actually on the Impact, the Impact was the first motherboard that I had tested that had this new Agisa code on it. And it became apparent that the Agisa upgrade had made a significant difference to certain parts of the review testing. So rather than the Impact standing out from the crowd and looking amazing in certain benchmarks, well, I knew it was this Agisa code difference because I had noticed that the boost had changed. I then went back and retested all of these boards. Now, the Gigabyte ones here, for example, um, the Gigabyte actually said, no, nah, don't bother publishing the first one. We'll wait for the new Agisa code, which technically meant I had to review them again, but that was absolutely fine. But the everything other than the impact in the Gigabyte were already live on the website. So... Going back and retesting did mean an awful lot of uh, work, but I'll kind of explain to you here why I've only had to test the stock and why the overclock results are still the old ones. I have filled in some of the gaps. But so we updated the BIOS basically, and there are easy ways for you to do that. I always do mine through the uh, actual BIOS itself and upload the BIOS file there. Um, with a big update as well, with the Asus ones, I normally do use BIOS Flashback. You do have to change the name of the BIOS file. They've got some tools, but to be honest with you, the quickest and easiest way with the Asus one is to open your driver CD and you will see a BIOS file in the root of that driver CD. Um, and essentially you just name the BIOS file to that file name that's in there and then uh, you can then use your BIOS flashback. There are lots of guides online on how to do it. The reason why I do it that way with the Asus ones is exactly more of a low level flash rather than the software sort of flash that you get in the BIOS, in like the normal BIOS, right? Because with um, BIOS flashback, you can actually do it without a CPU in. You only need to power the board up. Um, and there are, like I said, there are lots of guides online. So, the, um, what I will tell you is the biggest difference that I've seen with the new Agisa is single core performance. The multi-core boost, so the fully loaded things like Blender and stuff like that, haven't seen an increase. But the single core performance has been enough for me to want to retest all of these. So you'll see at the top of this graph, 
for the Cinebench R15, all the single threaded stock results are at the top. And amazingly, what happens is the overclock results are in the middle and then the Priagisa ones are at the bottom. So the reason why the Priagisa ones are at the bottom, and you can tell it's the original because it does say Priagisa in the graph, um, that basically means that the, uh, the stock performance is at the bottom. With an overclock, we managed to overclock past what the stock was boosting to. But then, amazingly, because it's a single threaded benchmark, you then get the newer Giza stuff at the top. So f um, if we were getting sort of like 4.2, 4.3 boosts with the Priya Giza, my manual all core overclock for the 3900X, which is the CPU that we've tested with here, the 3900X is the CPU I've tested all of these boards on, um, that would have been at 4.4. But then single core boost is now going up to 4.6, but it is only on a single core. So <clears throat> there's a bit of a catch 22 there, which we'll cover in a little minute. Cinebench R20, it's the same deal. You can see that you've got the pre, you've got the newer Giza stuff at the top, overclock in the middle, and then you have the Priya Giza at the bottom. Uh, we do also have a, a Geekbench graph, which uh, is one of the other few benchmarks that has made a difference. Now, to put it into context, to give you a bit of balance, if you put those results, or if we run all of those results through with Blender, then you can see that the, because Blender is multi-threaded, you can actually see it goes back to normal where you have the overclock at the top. And then there's actually a bit of a mix between what was going on at the bottom with the pre Giza and the normal Giza. Gaming uh, was a bit of a mix pack as well, actually. It was, <coughs> it kind of depended. I actually thought that the single threaded nature of this would have meant that the uh, most of the games would have had the Priya Giza at the top. But the fact that these are all mixed actually shows you there's still a good vari variance between the games that are single threaded and we are now getting games now that are more multi-threaded. So the higher the multi-core clock will be is where it kind of comes through and stays strong. Now, it's actually quite a quick video, but for quite a lot of work. And that is, I wanted to cover and show you that the boost performance for low threaded stuff is actually significantly up. But if you're a multi, multi threaded user, so content creation, maybe video editing, uh, photo editing, that sort of thing, then you're still going to get a, bo a boost from a manual overclock. What this does make me now wonder is what kind of differences can we get with Precision Boost Overdrive, because that's something I've actually enjoyed using quite a bit with the AMD stuff, both for overclocking and trying to reduce power limits because I've been playing around with the 3700X with the intention of possibly moving it into a server. Although the more I dig into that, the more gray area that ends up becoming. But Again, with the uh, purpose of this video, it was just to show you if you're one of those people that makes minimal increase, the uh, minimal changes to their system, puts their CPU together, makes it look nice, sets the operating system up as they want to, maybe change some fan profiles, but you're not really into overclocking, then these upgrades are something you really want to do because you could be getting the effectiveness of getting an overclock running on your rig just for changing the BIOS. It's a five minute fix. A lot of BIOSes have different modes on them now so that you can save your old one. But the only way that you can really mess a BIOS up is if you get a power cut or something like that. They, as long as you download the right BIOS for your board, um, then you'll be absolutely fine. And 99 times out of 100, if you've got the wrong BIOS for your board, like the difference with the Asus is sometimes is the difference between Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi, they won't actually flash anyway. So uh, if, they, if you've not got the right one, it probably won't work. If you've not got the uh, right name, for example, on BIOS flashback with the ROG boards, BIOS flashback just won't work and the light will end up just going solid blue and it won't have done anything. So that's something for you to keep in mind. And I would stress to everyone out there that you want to keep on top of these BIOS updates because there is more Agisa coming. And to give you a little bit of a hint as well, there is a Windows update coming. 
that is going to work in with the strongest core kind of mentality that you'll see in um, AMD Ryzen Master. And if you go in that, it'll actually tell you what the strongest core is. Now, Windows is actually going to be able to see that and it will um, task things to that core and how they split down after that um, as a priority. So it's actually going to end up making your rig a bit quicker. And I think that's the next big Windows update that's due to come out. I can't remember the name of it, but it is coming. And it is something that you should keep an eye on because first and foremost, it's going to make a big Im uh, impact on the AMD performance for low threaded and single threaded applications. But uh, Intel is trying to roll out a kind of copycat thing for the new X299 refresh, so the 10 series chips. That's technically going to have it on as well, and I don't know whether they'll then try and backwards roll it out with BIOS updates for the 9 series. Honestly, don't know. I only know that the 10 series at the moment, which is the X299 refresh, which is coming out in a few weeks, sort of at the end of October, beginning of November, they are all going to have that implemented as well. So the, the fact that Intel is pretty much now copying AMD shows you that they've, they're obviously on to a really good thing. And the only thing that I will close with on this is the single core performance is only going to really work if you're running your system at stock. Because the moment you fix your um, overclock to all the cores, how most of us do nowadays, um, it's going to then mean that you're not going to get that uh, positive boost. But it is going to depend on whether you're, you need all of your cores running really quick, or whether you're happy to have a few running quick, and then it filtering down to how many threads the program you're using. So that's it. Lots of testing, lots of results. These are now all going to go get put into the graphs for these. So you're going to see a review coming from me for the Aorus Extreme, the Aorus Master, the Aorus Pro, and I've got to get the impact out as well. So now you know why the X570 reviews have been a bit quiet, it's because AMD have rolled out a few of these at GISA updates and thankfully, the 1003 is the one that we wanted, the one that delivered the performance updates and the reason why I had to do all of this testing.